Today, I'm guiding you through an elbow fortification mobility workout. I will have an array of dumbbells and kettlebells available for myself along with a yoga block, and I'll leave a link in the description below for where you can get all of your equipment. You may recall that about a year and a half ago, I injured my elbow, and that set me on a road of PT and recovery, and it made me really think about how often people deal with elbow injuries and limitations because of the lack of strength of the musculature around your elbows. So I came up with this video, which focuses on weighted exercises to help strengthen your biceps, triceps, the flexor and extensor muscles in your forearm to help strengthen your elbows and give you more opportunity to do everything. So let's get to it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the bell for notifications, like this video, share it with your friends and family, and be sure to come back to this mobility playlist for more. So our first exercise is a tricep kickback. I'll be using 10s for now. We're doing three sets of 12. If you've ever gone to PT, you would probably recognize that they tend to do three sets of 12 as their block of strengthening exercises. So, if at any point you need to move down in weight, feel free, go ahead and do it. Because the goal here is really great form. We're gonna try and move nice and slow without just speeding through reps, but also, so for tricep kickbacks, you have a nice little hinge forward. You're bringing the, the weights up and they're kicking back behind your body. So if you're swinging, you can see that's not going to be triceps. You want to stay in this kind of position and really control that back point, kind of hold here for just a moment, and then come forward. So if you find you're doing a little bit of this or like they're getting real wide, you only need to go as far as you feel your tricep turn on. So let's go for three sets of 12. Finding that hinge. Bringing those weights forward and kick back. Two. So it might not feel like this. It might just be this sort of lean forward. Four. Five. Elbows stay tight to the body. Seven. Eight. Nine. Set those down. Take a breath for just a moment. I also want to make sure I put a disclaimer. If you have had an injury, make sure you're cleared by your doctor, your physical therapist before you start using weights. But when you do go to physical therapy, you might see some of these exercises. They're very common and they're really, really helpful, which is why I'm doing this video. So you have somebody to follow along with at home because sometimes if we don't have that person, we're just not going to do it. Right? So this is that opportunity to be able to continue that physical therapy work at home to really build strength. Here we go. Next set of 10, making sure that you're, or 12, pardon me, you're breathing, your feet are engaged. I'm going to turn this way so you can see from the front. I love to spread the earth with my feet. I talk about it all the time. So I'm doing that to make sure that my lower half is engaged. Finding that hip hinge, bring the weights up and back, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Take a breath, take a moment. Of course, if you're not at three sets of 12, that's okay. Go ahead and do three sets of 10, two sets of 10, whatever you feel capable of doing. And then you can always come back and add a few more reps and add a few more reps. You can also lower the weight and see if you can get all the way through. Make sure that you're just kind of incrementally building up. Here we go. 
set three of these tricep kickbacks. Finding that hinged position, bringing the weights up, squeezing, I'm spreading up the earth with my feet. So all of a sudden, even though my butt is a little bit back, I'm still engaged. My inner thigh meat comes forward and it really makes me solid in that lower half. Here we go. Tricep kickback, but it also has a little bicep curl in there. You're gonna have the weight here, and we'll be doing one arm at a time, and we'll alternate through the the reps, but or through the sets. You have the weight here. I want you to think about going kind of bring the weight in line with your shoulder, so you're really feeling that bicep engage. And then you're kicking out to the side. Again. It doesn't need to be shoulder height or anything like that. As soon as you feel your tricep engage, that's enough. So depending on the weight that you're using, it may happen sooner or later, but really it's about you doing the work of moving that weight. So we'll try with a 10. Again, thinking about spreading the earth with my feet. I'm standing up nice and tall, starting with my left side, which is my weaker side. That's the side that I have the injury on. So I bring the weight up. This is sort of that normal racked position. I want you to push that weight just a little bit further so you really feel the bicep working. Other hand can be wherever it feels comfortable, honestly. And kick out. Two. Notice if your shoulder's trying to creep up. You can put your hand there, right? You gotta pay attention to where this goes. If it's going too far, that's actually not gonna be super comfortable. Really close, so right in line with the shoulder. side. I'll notice a difference because this is my stronger side and I did not have an injury here. Again, thinking about bringing that weight in line with my shoulder, bicep is popping, squeezing my glutes, spreading the earth with my feet, tucking that pelvis under. Okay, yeah. Curl across the body. Two. So if you're looking in the mirror, you're really looking at your muscles the whole time. Bring that weight up, bring the dumbbell up, 
in line with my shoulder, kick back, one, we're out to the side really I guess, two, three, we're also sort of limiting how much rest time we have, you can set a timer for 30 seconds if that helps you, but we want to try and get through the entire set with minimal rest. side <clears throat> the hand will get really tired from holding you're kind of do I'm kind of doing like a little death grip on that side I know I can relax but in the moment it's hard because I'm getting tired so that's the automatic body response here we go other side set two one two sides you can see it this way Three, four, five. If you need a little help, you can also bring your hand behind your back. Make sure you're squeezing your glutes here. set of these on each side. Coming back to face forward, I'm going to go three quarter for you. Bringing the weight up so that the bell is in line with my shoulder, squeezing the glutes, tucking that pelvis under. Here we go. One. Two. It really helps me and it ensures that I am breathing. doing just this one exercise you're really feeling your bicep and your triceps you're also getting a little bit of forearms just from this twist
Go ahead and set those dumbbells aside for a moment. Feel free to shake out your hands, take a breath, take a sip of water if you need to. We're gonna come down onto the ground and I'll be using these kettlebells. I like the kettlebells for this particular exercise just because of the way that they move and their shape, right? Getting to hold on to this handle really helps. So we're doing supination and pronation, right? We're gonna turn our forearm, palm down, palm up. That's all we're doing, but we're adding weight to this. So I want you to actually set yourself up. You can be kind of sitting on your heels if you need to raise yourself, that's totally fine. But the goal is, your elbow will be down on the ground. I'll be starting with my left side because that is my weaker side. And the kettlebell bell is away from your body. You're holding on to the handle and you're just allowing other hand can be posting however is comfortable for you. I want you to try and control the drop every time. So Bell is, how do I explain that? You could see it, I think. <laughs> the bell bottom is either facing to the side or to your other side. You're holding on to the handle, however is comfortable for you. Your elbow is, entire forearm, for the most part, is completely resting on the mat when you're in this position with your palm facing down. And then you're turning over with that weight. So I'm using, what is this? An 8K, 17-ish pounds. So it's a good amount of weight on this injured elbow for sure. The goal here is to control the entire time. So here we go for 11 more. Lift, and then gently drop over to the other side. Don't just let it bounce, right? The more you can control, the more work you're doing. Three, four, Shake that out. We're going to move over to the other side. I want to use the same weight on my stronger side, even if it could go a little heavier. I'm really working towards that weaker side. So, same exact positioning. Other hand is just kind of posting however is comfortable for you. And also be dorsiflex and a little further away. Here we go. And one, two, such a specific exercise that even though this side is stronger, this is still a lot of work. Four, So 
feel tightness all through the arm as we start getting some of that swell. I'm going to lower down. This is a 6K now just because I want to have good form and great control more than be working really hard. I can always move over to uh, go back to the heavier weight, but I want to make sure I don't do anything to hurt myself, right? That's always the goal here. So here we go, round two, one, and this feels really easy comparatively, two, three, so I still want to try and move slowly and with control every time I lower the bell from one side to the other, four, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Whew. Go ahead and shake that out. Coming over to the other side. Elbows touching down. When your palm is facing down, your forearm is pretty much down on the ground, but obviously it will flip up and leave the, the forearm, not the elbow. We'll leave the mat or the table or whatever you're doing this on. Here we go. Make sure you're set up and one. Two, I slow myself down here. Three, the slower and more controlled, the more difficult and the more work you're feeling. to start with my weaker side because as I get tired I want to give that as much energy that side that weaker side especially as much energy as I can before I get even more tired right and because it is weaker it'll make me more tired usually here we go last set of these Three. Four. Okay, I'm gonna try and switch up and see how we go for a couple. Just because. I still want to be making sure I'm doing the best I can to strengthen this elbow. Ooh. Five. Awesome because I don't think I could have done another one on that this side so it's exactly kind of where I want to be I want to be challenging myself but not getting to a point of failure here we go we got four with this weight and then we'll move up and see how that goes Whoop. One. 
two. That conscious effort to slow it down on your stronger side. Three. Make sure it's a real gentle landing every time. Four. Switch over. Just because I did on the other side. that out take a breath I'm gonna set these kettlebells aside for a moment and come back to the dumbbells so I'm also gonna grab this block you could do this on a table or on the edge of a table I should say or um, a chair any kind of other surface so it's very small we're doing isometric wrist curls doing one at a time, right? Just bring these a little closer to myself just in case. And again, I'm going to start with the heavier weight and see how I get. If it doesn't feel right, I'll move down immediately. Because again, we're starting with my weaker side. So I have the block long ways so that my elbow is supported and my wrist is off of the edge. You, again, you can do this on a chair, on a table, any kind of surface, but um, if you're gonna be in this kind of position, you wanna sort of be heels, uh, butt to heels, where you're leaning forward. If you're at a table or something, you don't want your arm to be really high. You wanna have that nice shoulder pack as you do this. So even if it's something like if I sit this way, it's too low because now I have to do this. So right here is where you're looking to get. Here we go. We're going to start with palm face up. And I want you to lower down to the point where you can really bring the dumbbell kind of almost to your fingertips and then curl all the way up again. Isometric movement, so we want to move slowly with control every single time. Here we go. For our first set of 12. So I'm bringing my wrist in a nice, beautiful long line. So hand is in line, right? And then I'm going to lower it down, lower that weight. Maybe I'll touch the ground because that's how close I am to the ground, but I don't want to give the ground the weight. I'm still holding it. And then curl all the way up. Hold. And curl all the way up. Two. You can think about adding up to three second holds at the bottom and at the top. You want to add on, but you will notice very quickly again your forearms will be on fire doing this slow and with control. It's five, six. And you can certainly move faster, but you will notice when you do that, you are not feeling this burn. Eight. Nine. 
Switching over to the other side. Same movement. And again, you're starting out with a weight that is doable, right? You don't want to start with something that this is kind of crazy, really difficult, and you don't feel like you can curl all the way up. Making sure that elbow is supported. Here we go. Two. This also brings into question any kind of uh, wrist issues that you might have. Right? If you have any and this is really difficult, please start with a really lightweight, maybe no weight at all. Just try and work on it and see how that feels. trying to fight the urge to go faster because of course this side really, really wants to. lesser of a weight. Making sure I'm taking care of this injured elbow, which is, you know, it's been a year and a half and you would never tell you can't see anything, but it still gets tired faster. Um, I feel things after workouts, especially something like this. So I'm still icing. I'm still taking care of it, acknowledging that, you know, it's weaker, it needs a little extra love. <laughs> Here we go, set two. Bring that all the way down. And then curl up. Two. It will also be a uh, close up to try and give you a little more of a view so you can see all of the details of what I'm doing. And in the next set, I will turn to the side for you. Six. Seven. Notice. If you're getting a little fidgety, if this is getting harder for you. Eight. You notice you don't want to let the, the weight go down into just the fingertips as much. Nine. if your shoulder kind of starts creeping up on you. So I'll do this set in this direction. <clears throat> Here we go. Taking your time to get set up. So elbow is nice and supported. 
And because of this block and the length of it, it's like my whole forearm. So I can actually have the elbow off if that feels better for you sometimes, especially because I have kind of pointy elbows, having it resting on the surface is a little painful. Here we go. Bottom of set two. opportunity to notice any kind of, again, wrist imbalance or weakness, even fingers. Check that out. We got one more set here. Feel free to take a moment. You might notice your hands are shaking. Mine are a little bit because they're doing some good work, right? The whole arm feels like it's really working. I'm coming back to face forward. I'm going to stick with this weight unless I need to move down even more, which we'll see as we get through. Here we go. These are a great uh, little kind of mobility exercise to include if you do a lot of lifting, heavy lifting, Olympic lifting, anything at all. That puts a lot of strain on the elbow and wrists. This is a great exercise to help strengthen and reduce any kind of strain you may be feeling. Harder to do in this last set. Nine, like my wrist doesn't really want to come all the way up anymore. Ten. side last rep last round of these here we go Eight. Let's 
lower the go the, you go, the more you feel this burn. reverse curl. Same exact same setup, everything is basically the same, except your palm is facing down, right? Instead of doing the regular curl. So for this, you're only going to move up as much as feels comfortable for you. But the goal here is to improve range. And again, you're, you're setting up exactly the same. I'm going to start with this eight because my hands, my elbows, my forearms are tired now. Right, we're already here. And again, you're bringing it down and lifting up to wherever is comfortable for you. Two, using all of those fingers, so just if you need to. Three, four, you're not going to have quite as much range in this direction, five, six, also really kind of adds to the burn, which is a great way to work, but always remembering to shift down when you need to. Just listen to your body. It knows. Here we go. One, two, Don't remember how many I did on the other side. But this week, seven. So I'm gonna switch down. Again, I'll start with that heavier weight and see how many we go, and then shift down if I need to. Here we go. I'm going to show you from the side because it always helps to have a different view. So again, elbow is resting just barely off or right on the block. But you want to make sure your wrist is free to move. Okay. And oh one, two, three, four. Shift down. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well, 
This one's a doozy, so be kind to yourself and you'd be shocked, right? It, the weight really doesn't matter. Just this kind of work is not something we typically do. So it ends up being really tiring really quickly. Here we go for the other side, set two, one. Two. I know I can do more on this side, but I'm going to shift down because I am trying to work any strength imbalances away by working toward the weaker side, right? If you're always adding more weight on that stronger side, you're actually increasing that weight imbalance. Here we go. Or the strength imbalance, sorry. What was that? Five. Six. Shoulders back down. Ten. Eleven. And twelve. Whew. Okay, we have one more set of these. Coming back to facing forward for you. Let's see if I can still do five. It may become less and less each round, if that's okay. You can challenge yourself by testing it and seeing where you're at. Oof, one. So I also know I'm doing good work because I have to shift down. I'm challenging myself and then going to that point before failure and saying, okay, time to move down. Here we go. Here we go. Last set of these. black side. We're done beating on our knees now. Putting the block away, putting these dumbbells away. Okay, we get to come up to standing, but we're going to be doing a little bit of a march with these kettlebells. Again, challenge yourself. This should be work, but you want to stay safe. So, the goal here is to march with one hand pressed up first with the kettlebell bottom up. So what do I mean by bottom up? I mean that bottom, the bell side, is up. And we'll do this in this kind of L position. We want to have a nice, beautiful 90 degree angle, but then we're also going to start with the full press. Shoulder pack down. I think it's actually easier than the L because you really feel everything working. So I'm starting with that 
6K, because I'm pretty tired now. And we've been doing 12 reps per side. So we're, I'm gonna walk across this mat 12 times. You may wanna do it for a minute or something like that. There's, there's all kinds of different ways that you could consider this, right? It's really up to you. So, bringing the weight up, pressing up overhead. Actually, because my hand is a little bit sweaty, a great addition can be using a towel or like a band, right? Whatever works for you. And just wipe it off. Here we go. Bell up, press up, and I'm trying to control that walk. The hard part is that turn. That's two. Anytime you feel it wobbling too much or you need to take a break, feel free. This is hard work. Here we go. Press up, double up, shoulder pack down. side now. <clears throat> so we're doing that full press up and then we'll do this L position. Finding that bell up, press up, shoulders pack down. Here we go. So, <clears throat> if I'm facing you, you see my hand is in this nice 90 degree angle. If you're out here, it's not the same. So, elbow is in front of you the entire time. If you notice it start to creeping out to the side, just take a second, reset if you need to, and go again. Here we go. Bell is going to be up. 
finding that L position, really noticing, am I in a line or am I really low, right? You want to make sure you have that 90 degrees. Here we go. And breathe as you walk. Turns are the hardest part. Five. Woo. Shaking a little bit. Here we go. Six. Seven. Oh, this arm is definitely tired. We're almost there. strong side. This is exactly why I do my weaker side first because whew, I don't know that you could do it afterwards. Here we go. 12 walks. Finding that nice 90 degree angle. Two. Even though this is not necessarily the injured side. I want to make sure I'm doing the work on both sides. You know, you want to keep things even. Four. Five. You may discover compensations or other awarenesses of other elements that you need to strengthen on that weaker or on that stronger side. This is seven. Ooh. Almost there. Eight. Nine. Ooh, shaking. Ten. Oh, I'm definitely walking faster. <laughs> Almost their last two laps. And 12. Oh, go ahead and set that down. Whew. Beautiful job today. Oh my goodness, shake out those wrists, shake out the arms. Step forward. I want you to kind of twist your body side to side. Let those arms just kind of flap and be free. Wherever they land, they land. Nowhere specific to get. Oh. Coming back to center. Nice little stretch. You're gonna extend your arm out straight. Grab your palm and those fingers. Pull towards you, keeping that shoulder packed down. One more breath. Then we're going to turn the palm around. Same thing. Palm faces you. Pack your shoulder down. Other side. Good 
One more breath here. And turn the palm facing you. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you and you've discovered something new that you didn't know you needed, but now you do. <laughs> and I appreciate all of your feedback and uh, suggestions. I'm always looking for what things you want to see, what things you need to work on. So please reach out to me via any of my social medias or here, drop me a comment on any of my uh, videos. I'm, I'm checking them all the time. So I'd love to hear from you. Let me know how you got on with this particular workout. And if you want to see more of this kind of uh, strength and mobility kind of work. Thank you. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.